He had it all, money, head-turning career, houses, boat, a plane, a big paycheck, but he was still restless. Dean Nawalny calls it smoldering discontent. Dean found himself craving for work that really matters. He went from living the party life to Wall Street to Chicago, where he oversaw a $100 million business. He's now helping others find their purpose in gifting. Dean, it's great to have you back on 100 Huntley Street. Thanks for having me, Greg. So you go from Wisconsin to the 40th floor of the Mercantile Building in Chicago. How yeah. did that all happen? Well, when I grew up, uh, my family was so focused on getting to the next level financially. So I was focused myself as I was growing up. Well, how do I get to that next level financially? So one of the ways I thought to do that was to get into the financial services world. And that's what I did because I thought happiness was going to come from having material possessions and wealth and other things like that. And so I focused on making as much money as I could, but I, I, I thought, what's the best way to go about doing that? Well, the best way I thought was to be in the financial services world. So I focused on getting into that world in 1987 and spent 23 years there and ultimately ended up on the 40th floor of the Mercantile Exchange Building. And it did, though, you had to pay a price. It did cost you your first marriage. It did. It did. I was so focused on achieving success and accumulating things because, again, I thought that would bring me happiness that I forgot about my wife, quite, quite honestly. I was not a good husband from the standpoint of spending time with her. A lot of men, though, struggle with that career. And, and I, maybe there's a balance of not putting too much pressure on men. Like, look, you're trying to earn a living, you know, pay the rent, the mortgage, those kinds of things, get the kids ready for college. Mm -hmm. But there is that, you know, going too far, I guess. And that would, is that what you found yourself? Yeah, I found that I, I, my priorities were wrong. My priority was all about cli climbing the corporate ladder, making more money. It was not about my ministry with my wife and make in and having my marriage flourish and and uh that it, that kind of took a back seat to everything else i was doing so at after a certain amount of time we just started to drift apart because i was so focused on the marketplace and not on my marriage career you know and providing your family is important how sure. can we find the balance though yeah, I think the balance is always challenging. There's nothing wrong with making money. And in, in my book, Trade Up, I talk about that. I think a lot of people think about, I have to leave the marketplace and go into the ministry, and making money is a bad thing. Well, making money is not a bad thing as long as your heart's in the right spot. But for me, it's always putting my family first. So what, at the beginning of the year, what I do is I look at my calendar and I make sure that date night with my spouse is on my calendar, football games with my son, dance with my daughter. That's the priority for me. So when I put that on my calendar first, then I fill work in after that. And so I, I make sure that I take time and prepare myself in order to live that life of balance. Because if you don't, sometimes you can get off track. Those things, though, you know, going, you know, football with your son, date night with your wife, yeah. going to the daughters dancing. Yeah. Those things often get pushed aside because of the urgency of, you know, being in business. Yeah, there is no doubt about that. I mean, let's face it, there are going to be times when you have to be focused on business because that's just, if you're in an executive position or any position for that matter, work sometimes takes priority. But if it takes priority too much, you'll lose the things that are really important in life. So you're living the American dream. Houses, boat, plane, all these things. You're on the 40th floor of this building in Chicago. Yeah. And you say, it's not enough or this is the wrong. What, what were you thinking? Well, it's a tad bit embarrassing when you share that, but uh, the reality is I was living what I thought was the perfect life. Like I said earlier, I thought that's what would bring me happiness, all those things. And I'll never forget Bob Buford, who wrote the book Halftime. Mm -hmm. He was interviewed in 1999. I went to that interview. And he talked about going from success to significance. And I thought, well, that's great for him and all his friends. I'm not there yet. I'm still about making money and, and accumulating wealth. But one day in 2006, I'll never forget it, Greg, I was sitting in my office looking out the window, Lake Michigan on one side, pictures of my wife and children here, and I thought to myself, I should be living or be the happiest person on earth. And I finally looked out the window and just said, God, there has to be more to life than this. There has to be more to life than this. And I didn't really know what was happening. But as I look back, that was my season of smoldering discontent. God had other plans for me at that point. 
You sure did. And uh, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about your journey and how you found Jesus and now what you feel the Lord has called you to do and the amazing things that are happening. I know it's impacting men across our country and your country as well. We'll be back with more 100 Huntley Street right after this.